How much would your life change if you knew every single time someone told you a lie? Even if that someone was you. Lies like, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't own a business, and you definitely will never make more than you did in your old corporate job. Get ready to be proactive, passionate, productive, and oh so profitable in a way you never before experienced by opening your eyes to the Big Fat Lies Show. Now, here is your host of Big Fat Lies, success sorceress, and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Oh my goodness, you guys. Happy Monday. Happy fun day. Today, we are talking about the open or undefined third eye or Ajna, A-J-N-A, as it's referred to in human design. So before we jumped on, before we press go, my producer was like, well, what is that voice inside your head? Is it actually you? So I was just reading her this. This is from the definitive book of human design. The not self mind is the spokesperson for the undefined centers. Here are some examples of what the not self mental monologue could sound like with an undefined Ajna center. I better figure this out. We have to figure this out. What should I do with my life? I got to figure out what to do with my life. Where is my next move? I'm certain that this thing will happen or won't happen. I have to figure out life because it feels futile. I have to know the answer. I have to put order into my life because I need to get rid of the chaos. I have to make this new idea a reality in my life. I better not share this because people are going to think I'm weird or strange. Uh, I'm not going to share my opinion because I don't want to be challenged. I have to be ready for the challenge. What am I going to say? So here's the thing. 53% of the population, every one out of every two people that you meet has an undefined third eye or a completely open third eye. Now, conditioning is what people with definition do to people without definition. So in human design, there's a concept called conditioning. And so really, you're just like actively programming the people in your field with your points of view. And so a conditioned third eye person will have other people's points of view installed on their operating system. So if you imagine we're all like little computers and we have all of these receptors in our body, all nine of these receptors, and uh, there's two more that are coming online in the future. And we have these receptors. And so these receptor centers, today we're talking about the Ajna or the third eye. And so why is this important? Well, if you are uncertain, if you don't know what you need to say, if you are having trouble conceptualizing, if you're having trouble with logical thinking, if you're having trouble uh, being logical with people who expect you to be logical, and you do not have definition in this area, this, this center is not colored in on your human design chart. And then you're thinking, well, what are you talking about, Jennifer? So if you don't know what your human design ch chart looks like, uh, you can go to any web browser and type in free human design chart, um, a site uh, called Genetic Matrix, another one called Jovian Archive. I like those two because those are the easiest to notice, like, hey, do I have definition in this area? But 53% of the population, so either you're defined or undefined, but the other part of the humanity is undefined. And so it will be very interesting if you're a defined person to listen to this, because if you have somebody in your life that you love that doesn't have definition and you're asking them to be actual factual and logical and, you know, come up with concepts that are going to work, they can't say what's going to work. They cannot. They, however, are very abstract thinkers. They are 5,000 shades of gray, whereas someone with a defined third eye is black and white. They're like, it's going to work. It's not going to work until they get more information. And then that more information might help them change their mind, whereas an abstract thinker is not designed to be certain. 
So fact number one, you are not designed to be certain. You're just not. So if you're looking for certainty, you're kind of looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> Remember that old song? You know, it's like, you're not designed to be certain. You are designed to play with all of the freaking possibilities, you guys. You're just designed to play with all the possibilities. And that's okay. Fact number one, you are not designed to be certain. And so give yourself a freaking break. You know, if you're just going to listen to five minutes of this show, give yourself a break. Everywhere you are trying to be certain, every time you're trying to be right about anything, don't freaking bother. Don't freaking bother. And, you know, at the beginning of your experiment with playing with these human design tools, all of your conditioning, all of your programming is going to come up. It just will. And so human design, uh, the system has been around since the late 80s. And I've been studying it now since uh, 2019 and hired really great mentors. And I'm also excellent uh, as an abstract thinker, as an open crown, I'm really excellent with uh, language. You know, I just, I really, any new codes, any new languages, any new way of looking at things, thank goodness for my open Ajna, thank goodness for my open crown, and also thank goodness for my open ego that I don't actually have to be excellent at things. You know, all of that sort of school of excellence that I talk about if you watch my show uh I kind of you know the more I get to it the more I understand that I don't have to be perfect at things people aren't looking for perfection from me and if they are looking for perfection from me they're going to be sadly disappointed I'm a very loving person very loving person and I really want the very best for people but you know logical thinking is not my thing outside of the box thinking you absolutely can expect that from me you know like you show me what's going on in your life I will show you infinite possibilities like so many possibilities and then we dial them down to which ones are possibilities for you possibilities for the people that you love possibilities for your clients possibilities for your finances all of the freaking possibilities but you know logical I want to say pedantic thinking I just I will never be that person I won't be that and so I do have friends that I trust who have defined crowns, who have a whole defined head. And, you know, the great thing about them is that because they love me, their logic is their logic. And do I have to listen to everything that comes out of their face? No. Quite often I'll have a talk with them and they'll be like, well, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And then I'll be like, oh, well, you know, I thought about this, 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 and this. And they'll be like, oh, I didn't even think about that thing. Oh, well, then go ahead, you know, because I've given them more data. And so that's one of the things that's really, really kind when people with defined heads, crowns, and third eyes can have a really loving relationship with somebody who doesn't have one and doesn't expect that person, the, the, the open Ajna person to come at them with a very logical, um, linear way of thinking, you know, because I don't have that, guys. You know, you notice you're like, well, Jennifer, you like go into a story and then you come back with some more facts and then you go into a story and then you come back with some more facts. Like if you can follow my thinking, I think in many cases you are having an open crown having an open third eye, and you may also be a neurodivergent thinker. And there's so many more people who are identifying themselves as neurodivergent thinkers. You know, whatever the, you know, the DSM of 
neurodivergence is like uh back when i was young they actually thought that only boys had autism and they actually thought that only boys had uh attention deficit like a bunch of different things because boys acted out more and they didn't mask as well as girls did and so yeah am i a neurodivergent thinker you bet do i need to run off and get myself diagnosed with something no i think probably the best thing that i can recommend is the more you really start to dig into your own personal process and how you come up with what it is that you're going to do next how you interact and interface with the people in your life the places in your life the things in your life the talents that you have the things that you're here to experience and the more you say yes to the things that are like delightful and loving and kind and blissful and the more you say no to the things that are not that the more you start to program your life so that everything shows up the way that it's supposed to. Now, is this like law of attraction? Absolutely. Do I expect you to be accountable for your results? Absolutely. I'm a freaking, you know, as much as I am an abstract thinker, I am a Virgo. I want us to look at the data. I want us to look at how blissful your results have been how kind they are because as a generator i'm a manifesting generator which is a, a a generator i'm here to be deeply satisfied and there is so much satisfaction in data like i freaking love it i'm like mm, look at what we got this is so juicy and that's just kind isn't it to get data especially when you're like looking for the things that work you start looking for the things that work, even as an abstract thinker, start looking for the things that work. And do they have to make sense? Oh, no, absolutely not. The things that work do not have to make sense. They just don't. Like maybe somebody gives you something that you're not supposed to have. Are you going to give it back? Especially if it's something that you absolutely love. No, no. And, you know, does it make sense? Well, you think about like logical, linear, um, you know, one plus one equals two type of thinking. That's not actually true. One plus one equals three. Uh, <laughs> but that's another cool concept that you have to have a look at with me one day. So what do I want to talk to you about today? What did we promise? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So uh, decoding mental overwhelm, strategies to overcome overthinking and mental overwhelm, empowering decision-making techniques for making clear decisions with an open third eye or Ajna, navigating sensitivity, insights on managing sensitivity to mental pressure and intense environments, cultivating authentic perspective, Embrace your unique perspective in discerning true opinions, transforming self-doubt, strategies to overcome indecisiveness and self-doubt in decision-making. Yeah, so those are the some, some of the things that I thought we might want to talk about today. And if we get to them, great. If we don't get to them, great. But before we get rolling here, this show is called Big Fat Lies. And so what are the big fat lies, you ask yourself, or me? Uh, the big fat lies are anything that stops you from being so happy, so healthy, so wealthy, and so loved. That's what you're here to have. Happy, healthy, wealthy, loved. And so if there are things in your life that are preventing you or slowing down your happiness, healthiness, wealthiness, and love quotients, then there are big fat lies or subconscious entrainment that's stopping you from having it and this is your birthright this is your absolute birthright but it can be a bit of a jigsaw puzzle it just can 
And so when you know what you're here to be and do, when you know what your primary currency is in life, like your energetic currency, then it becomes easy to make really great decisions. And so we're going to start talking about those really great decisions and your primary currency after the break. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. This show is called Big Fat Lies. Join me after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies, Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Central, and 6 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners like you from being the bright shining beacons that you came here to be. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com oh my goodness so another thing is that this is the best way to get to know me is to engage with me live i do have live broadcasts uh i also move those live broadcasts over to my YouTube channel and uh, anything that you see, like if you're listening on any of the podcast platforms, if you're listening on YouTube or watching on YouTube, I love hearing from you and like whatever it is, whatever's going on in your life, I really believe it boils down to those four legs of the chair. It's happiness, healthiness, love, and wealth. And actually, if you look at the entomology, well, I'm such a word nerd. If you look at the entomology of the word wealth, it actually means health. So when you think about it, do you have the type of money coming into your life that allows you to take really, really great care of your earth vehicle? And, you know, in the metaphysical circles that I, I am in, People are like, wow, Jennifer, why do you talk about money so much? You know, why is money so important to you? Well, I think that people who have the amount of wealth that they need in order to be able to have an opulent life, an opulent life. So whatever opulence is for you, you know, organic food always in the grocery, in your, in your fridge, in your pantry, uh, you know, a beautiful vehicle to drive that you feel safe, like you could drive it across Canada, you could drive it to like Nicaragua if you wanted, uh, you know, and you know, beautiful clothes that you love that keep you cozy that you feel stylish in uh, a gorgeous home that you feel safe in that's peaceful, that's beautiful. Uh, you know, just like everything that you would consider opulent. I would say that those are absolutely needed and absolutely necessary items in your life. So, you know, living uh, close to the poverty line, I, I don't recommend it, guys. I don't recommend it. You know, have I done it? Yeah. Have I done it a lot? Yeah. And do I know what 
is required to not live that type of life? Absolutely. Do I know the mindset shifts that need to get uh, initiated and how to keep them in place? Absolutely. And, you know, do my clients have excellent results? Yes, they absolutely do. And, you know, when we start to talk about opulence, then people just relax. You know what I mean? Like if I started to talk to you about taking, you know, um, like having a budget, God, people absolutely hate that. They hate the idea of having a budget. Nobody gets excited about having a budget, especially if you are an abstract thinker, especially if money doesn't have to make sense for you. You guys get that. Like as an abstract thinker, you have more power to bring in opulence, to bring in new money, to bring in new ways of having money. And then, you know, I mean, you can fill in the blank. It's new ways of being happy, new ways of being healthy, new ways of being wealthy, new ways of being loved. You know, like you do not have to follow that linear thinking, the one plus one equals two. As an open Ajna or an undefined Ajna or third eye, you are definitely a one plus one equals three thinker. You're Fibonacci on that baby. <laughs> you just are. And isn't that great? Like to just give yourself permission to not have to make sense. You don't have to make sense. And you do not have to be certain. So the one thing that you can be certain about is that there is no certainty. You know, like when you think about people oh, getting excited, I'm putting my book away. I just like have a lot to say about this. I have a lot to say about this. Super important to me. 53% of the population is running around trying to be certain. Like how much of a waste of time, you know, because they're abstract thinkers. So they are artists trying to be accountants. <laughs> As a third eye, undefined third eye, you are an artist. You don't have to be an accountant. There are people who are math brains, as I call them, or, you know, deeply, uh, you know, like I just, I, I'm thinking of the people that I know, that I love, that, uh, you know, if I ever need something read, or if I ever need somebody to tell me why something's not going to work. The people who have, because uh, there's two different types of brain. There's the possibility brain, which I have. Like you bring me, you know, what's going on in your life. You're like, Jennifer, my business is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, let's look at all of the things. You know, let's just sit down and look at all of the things. And um, which I love. You know, I just love unpacking things like it just it fills my heart. Like my favorite thing to do is is conceptualize. My favorite thing to do is figuring out how to make new money out of old things that, you know, it's like, you know, I'm almost like a seamstress. I like want to like redesign businesses, redesign um, you know, your wealth flows, your your financial flows, all of those things. It's very, very important to me. Very, very important to me. And, you know, with that abstract thinking, if you're not here to do the logical thinking, then it gives you permission to have that abstract thought. And the more you are in your role doing the abstract thought, you know, in cohesion with the people who are honestly the accountants and the lawyers and the people who need to have that actual factual logical thinking you know it's just so perfect like it gets so jacked about it and that's like the number one thing that i'm here to be and do you guys is to get jacked about what's possible in life in life and so, you know, when you go back to those people who are like, Jennifer, why do you talk about money all the time? Well, money is a really great way for you to be able to collect data on what it is that you're good at, what it is that you um, can conceptualize. So regardless of whether you're an abstract thinker or not, the conceptualization 
is what comes through. And that's what people pay you for is your talents. And so regardless of what your talents are, whether you're like honestly an artist and you're like painting things or, you know, teaching people how to dance or whether you're like me, you're an artist with concepts and things like I, I do. I love art, love it. And so when people bring me their businesses and their lives and they're like, ooh, this is all out of kilter, I'm like, well, that's because that thing needs to go there and that thing needs to go there and that thing needs to go there and you need to flick that thing off. And so that's the type of thinker that I am. So with that undefined, I'm not completely open in my third eye, I'm completely open in my crown and then I have one gate in my third eye. So the gate that I have in my third eye is the 47. And so how I visualize the 47 is, um, because the 47 is the alchemist. So the alchemist takes base metals and turns them into gold, right? So I have the ability to take the base metals of people's lives, people's businesses, what they bring to me and help them find the gold. So when I look at it, I don't know if you've ever seen this, you guys, you know, those art installations where you go into a room and it seems like there's just like a bunch of junk laying on a table. And you're like, well, what is that? There's like a pen, you know, there's like a McDonald's wrapper, you know, there's some like tin foil, there's like a little toy horse, you know, just, and then you go down and you look through the lens you look through the lens and it's like the Mona Lisa. Somebody has piled this junk up and now it's the Mona Lisa. Isn't that so weird? And so I feel like the 47, so you can look up this, like what is the 47 human design gate? Because that's the only gate that I have in my Ajna, in my third eye. And I do know that people bring me their big pile of junk. They're like, oh my God, Jennifer, my life isn't working. I'm not making enough money. Me and my partner are fighting all the time. We have no sex life. Like, yeah, it's just not working, Jennifer. And I will be able to pile up their junk and, and put it in a way where their talents and their capacities and their abilities are honored in their day-to-day -day life. And one of the best ways right now that we're talking about is taking you out of the role of having to be a logical, linear thinker. Because you're really not here to do that. You're not here to be a logical, linear thinker. You're just not. <laughs> So have a look at that, you guys, like everywhere you've been trying to make sense to people, everywhere you try to be like logical, can you just be like, oh, that's not me. I don't have to be logical anymore. And it may take you like the experiment, we call it in human design, the experiment may take the rest of your life. And I always joke like, okay, so the human body is actually designed to live 800 years, seven to 800 years. And I think we just die because we're bored. <laughs> we're just like, fuck it. I'm out. I'm bored. So I would say if you allowed yourself to have like an audacious amount of time, an opulent amount of time to change your mind on some of these things that have been programmed onto your operating system, like the big fat lies about having to be logical, having to make sense, and that being an abstract thinker is somehow less valuable. Think about that. Does, it, does that feel true to you that an abstract thinker is less valuable? Because it's not true, man. There's this thing called change management. If you don't know about change management, all of us abstract thinkers are just like, oh, we're like candy for people who need to change. Because we're just like, well, do it different. Do it like this. Why don't you try this? And because we're abstract thinkers, we are able to access all of the possibilities, the infinite possibilities. And there are so fucking many, like just so many possibilities. And I'm aware, you know, when I speak to people, 
of the amount of possibilities. And I have to filter that down because I don't want to fire hose them. You know, that's just unkind. And luckily, human design really helps me like rain all those possibilities in so I can show them, okay, yes, you are designed for this type of business. These are your primary you know, profitability to partners and, you know, just like a bunch of different things that we would do together if we were going to be looking at you as a client for me. But right now, I just want to give you permission. You don't have to be logical. You are an abstract thinker. And we're going to talk about more of that after the break. So much for, thank you so much for joining me live. If you're joining me live, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Please join me after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies, Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Central, and 6 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners like you from being the bright shining beacons that you came here to be. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness. Welcome back, you guys. We are having fun in the chat room here. And I want to remind you that these shows, when I go live, this is your opportunity to come and interface. Uh, quite often people are like, well, how come you don't do this type of work? How come you don't do this type of work? Well, I will tell you, honestly, my profile is the hermit. The hermit. <laughs> So yes, I love people, but I'm here to love the people that I'm here to love. So with a hermit profile, so if you have a two in your profile in human design, you're not actually here to be here for everybody. You don't have a universal profile. And so that gives you permission to one, I've already given you permission to be an abstract thinker uh, and to be so filled with possibilities. And then the next thing I want to give you permission to have or be or do is you don't have to be everything to everyone, especially with a third eye that is open, because that gets a ton of information, a ton. Oh my God, you wouldn't believe all the stuff I know about people holding up in air quotes. Uh, when I meet them, especially if I touch you uh, or I have an interface with you, uh, if I spend time with you, like these messages come through over and over and over again. So if you're a regular listener, you know, I am a lifelong psychic, a lifelong intuitive and luckily grew up in a family where that wasn't dismissed. I mean, I did get dismissed for a lot of different things, one of which was not being a logical thinker. <laughs> But I mean, good luck explaining it to people that I get messages and uh, I just do. And luckily, I have spent a lot of time. I have done a lot of study 
uh, learning how to master that part of myself. So the third eye, if you're getting a ton of messages about people, about life, about what people should be choosing, uh, it's not going to be an instant change. And I would say a lot of us, you know, especially the younger generations have been programmed um, that if they can't change it uh, quickly, then it means that they're somehow broken or they're somehow, um, you know, yeah, they just don't match or they don't fit in. And I would say that's unkind. That's so unkind. You know, you are here to be your own unique person. You are here to be your own unique set of talents, capacities, and abilities. And, you know, those are all in your charts, you know. So if you're like, I don't even know why I'm here, Jennifer. Um, one of the things that I can do is I can sit down with you on a mentorship and we can work together uh, for 30 days. You have a couple of sessions with me over the course of 30 days. You get a bunch of different kind of charts and, you know, we pick one or two things that aren't working for you. And I give you what I call vectors. You know, um, I don't know if you guys know how a cell phone works. So a cell phone works on three different connection points. So you're one of those connection points. And then it does something called ping off of two different other cell phone towers. And like GPS works on all of these too. So these vectors in your charts give you some data that you can start to extrapolate information from and make better choices, just better choices, different choices than you have been making. And I would say that that's something that's so, so valuable, so valuable. And I probably say this story so many times that people are like, oh my God, if I have to hear this story one more time, Jennifer, but it's really, really important to know that your human design chart, so there's the black side and the red side, the black side is your normal Western astrology. And so the number one thing that you're here to be and do is that personality sun, that black sun. And mine is the 46. And so the 46 is amazingly lucky, so freaking lucky. And I can tell you so many times I have found like money or one money or been given things that were worth really a lot of money or given, you know, memberships to things or just, you know, like people have given me things. I have found things. I'm a very, very lucky person. So that, and then the frequency that goes with that is delight, the word delight. And so I study something called gene keys as well as human design. And so that frequency of delight, that's 70% of what I'm here to be and do. 70 freaking percent. So if my results aren't delightful, then I'm not really in the right place at the right time with the right people. I'm just not. And so that serendipity part of my chart, the lucky part of my chart is it's called the rainmaker. So it's like being at the right place at the right time with the right people. Or if I'm not, I got to go. I got to collect that data. I got to punch my ticket and get the hell out. And so knowing what your primary frequency is, even with, especially with this open third eye, like this level of certainty that you're searching for with life is never going to show up for you. It's not. And so the vectors of what to look for that you can be certain about or you can develop or achieve or grow some certainty is you start to look at the other parts of your chart. So it's like, okay, we don't know what we don't know. And we're not here to be deep knowers or intellectuals. 
But I think there is actually, now that I say that, there really isn't an intellectual component. It's almost like, what do I want to say about this? Playing jazz with con concepts is something that a open Ajna or open third eye person could do. They're like, okay, yeah, we could do that. And this is like my favorite game always. And it's such a third eye game is like the and then game. And have a look at the people that you could play the and then game with. So it's like, not only, not only could we do that thing, then do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, we could do this thing and then we could have merch. Oh, well, what kind of merch would we have? Oh my God, should we have books? Should we have sweatshirts? Should we have like hats? And then it's like, oh my God, yes, we should have hats. And this is what the hats should look like. Oh my God, and this is where we should sell the hats. And, and you know, and this is who should be our champion or our, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, our influencer. You know, so the and then game, I would say, is such an open third eye game to play. And so if you do not have an open third eye, the and then game is so fucking hard because you're just looking for binary. It's like not going to work, works, not going to work, works, not going to work, works, you know, and like it's like I love my friends I love my clients that have the defined Ajna and the defined crown, but it's also very hard for them. Like I have to modulate my and then game, <laughs> you know, like maybe get to like the third and then, and then just let them uh, marinate. And I do do that. I'm like, okay, go do this thing and then come back. And then we'll have a choice or three and then go do pick that and go away and come back because I am a big freaking picture person. And so when I just like barf out all the possibilities, I can do it with people who have an open third eye or an undefined third eye, but I cannot do it with someone who's defined there. Like that's just fucking cruel. And I would never do that. I would never be cruel. No, no. I might say stuff that you need to hear after I've tried to do it nice. <laughs> but cruelty is not on my radar. It's just not. So, oh my goodness, we've just been talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. Uh, what haven't I covered? What is it that you would love to hear from me? Uh, anywhere you're listening on the replay. I'm just going to have a look at this. Embrace your unique perspective and discerning true opinions. Wow. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So when you have an undefined third eye or an open third eye, you can have other people's opinions installed. So everywhere you think you're certain about something, you're like, oh, well, we're not going to go any further into the inquiry process because we already know this, 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 and this. And anywhere where that is there, taking up bandwidth, it means that your inquiry process has come to an end, which isn't correct for someone with an open third eye. You're never going to get any more than, say, maybe in the 60th percentile, somewhere between 60 and 70 percent um, certain of the possibilities like, did I choose the correct possibility? But it's so funny. I saw this thing on the internet that was so good. I just laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. It was a meme and it said something like, um, creator or God or the universe has factored in, like, I want to say it said, your level of stupidity. <laughs> 
great. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, creator, for factoring in my level of stupidity because you're not here to be certain. You're not here to be actual factual. You're not here to be linear. So when people are listening to you and people are listening to me, they're like, wow, she is all over the freaking place. Well, I am here to be all over the freaking place. I just am. I am a multi-dimensional thinker. I, I exist in multi-dimensions when I am with my clients. I exist in multi-dimensions when I'm living my life. And so to be actual factual, just not here to be that and do that. And I think about all of the different relationships that I've had that wanted me to be actual factual Oh my God, those poor people. I feel sorry for them now. Even though I felt abused, I now feel sorry for them because I was never going to fit into that box. So we are heading into another break. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. This show is called Big Fat Lies. Join me after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies, Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Central, and 6 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners like you from being the bright shining beacons that you came here to be. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, welcome back, you guys. So we are doing a series on the open or undefined centers in human design. The reason why is because those centers are so, uh, I want to just say fraught with peril. Like when I learned about my open centers, especially my open ego center, I was like, wow, that explains all of the difficulty that I've had with my life. Like I've had a ton of consciousness training. So the open crown, I was like, yes, I totally understand that I get messages from all over the place. And most of them, unless somebody actually walks up to me and says, hey, Jennifer, can you help me with this? It's not my business. You know, even if somebody appears to be, you know, asking for help, maybe they're just bitching. Or it appears that somebody like wants to get to know me. Maybe they haven't got to the process. You know, they haven't seen what they need to see in order to be able to like phone me and ask me to work with me or be my friend or go for dinner or whatever it is. And just because I know I can see all of that doesn't necessarily mean there's anything for me to do about it. And so I've had a ton a ton of training on that. So I'm good. I'm just staying over here until somebody asks me very, very specifically for that. And I would say with the third eye, if somebody wants to play the and then game with you, like, you know, like merchandise, and then who would be our influencer? Like I was saying, like, that's just my favorite game in the whole world, especially with business owners. Um, I just freaking love it. But trying to play the and then game with somebody who doesn't have the conceptualization powers, 
No. So I'm very, very careful with my clients with the defined uh, third eye. So careful with them. And so they still get my possibilities, but I'm delivering them gently, very, very gently. And so notice that, you know, if you have the undefined third eye, don't fire hose people, you know, you're going to know if somebody's like a black and white person, you're going to know fairly quickly. Um, and in most cases, black and white people say no faster than they say yes. And conceptualized people like uh, open third eye people say yes, faster than they say no. And then, you know, then they get more data and then they're like, mm, that's actually a no for me now. And the ability to be able to start to say no when something turns into a no um, is that's not really all that approved of in business. You know, when somebody gives you enough information that you start to say no, how do you have that dialogue with them? And then also, how do you get enough information from them in order to be able to conceptualize what you would do with them. I mean, it's, these are so many different conversations. So, so many different conversations and yeah. So what do I want to leave you with today? I want to leave you with that. You do not have to be certain. And so 53% of the population is pretending to be certain. <laughs> You know, I mean, there might be a small percentage of the population who's learned that they don't have to be certain and that they can still continue to live their life. And that's a pretty zen place to be. And, you know, I still fight that. People are like, you know, what are you certain about? And nothing. What, I, what I'm certain about is that a lot of the possibilities that I come up with for people, I have correct data on, and that correct data is my clients telling me, hey, I tried that thing that you suggested, and it fucking worked. And I'm just like the biggest freaking cheerleader. And that's in my chart. That's in my chart. I'm here to be a cheerleader. I have the whole entire talent channel. So it's like getting messages uh, and then shooting them to the correct people so that they can really start to build this delightful life, this opulent life, and that they don't have to be cheap with themselves. You know, you don't have to live off of crackers like that. I, I don't recommend it, you know, and if you know anything about how the quantum field works, it's ask and receive. It's Amazon, baby. So if you want to have cashmere, then you got to type cashmere in because, you know, you're going to get sent rayon if <laughs> you just ask for a sweater. And that's what life is like. That's what life is like, you know, and I would say if anything that I have said has been valuable, if anything that I've said has really like made you think abstractly and freaking great. That's what I'm here for. I have a whole series right now on the open centers. I've got two more classes that I'm going to do one on the open G center and one on the open sacral or sex chakra center. So I've got two more classes that I'm going to be doing. Uh, but the rest of the centers, so anywhere your center is open, it's undefined, it's not got color in it in your human design chart will be places where you do have difficulty with life you've been programmed and you have the wrong software installed on these beautiful parts of you you know just for example say your third eye is like i gotta be certain i gotta be certain i gotta be certain so there's a virus called i gotta be certain and so we got to get that virus out of there and the best way to do that is to just be like wow now I don't have to be certain. And so for the next 7,000 years of your life, you don't have to be certain. You just don't have to be. And there are people who can be certain, but they are not you. You know, and it's like, whatever color your eyes are, that's what color your eyes are. So if you're trying to live life as a dark eyed person and you're a light eyed person, like stop. And if you're having difficulty with any of it, I'd love to talk to you. This is what I do for a living. Please reach out. 
Yes. So I just want to say thank you so much for showing up today. I know there's a ton of things that you could spend time listening to and engaging with. And it's just so valuable to me to have you connected to me and maybe learning something from me. So thank you so much for showing up. Please engage anyway as that thank you for listening to big fat lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor jennifer kramer lewis join us next week at 3 p.m pacific 4 p.m mountain 5 p.m central and 6 p.m eastern on inspiredchoicesnetwork.com until next week jennifer invites you to laugh at limitation and live your life delightfully by opening your eyes to the big fat lies show